I'd like to begin this lesson with a warm-up, and this warm-up you can do if you looked at the Ohm's Law lesson, if you understand about the current. Ohm's Law tells us that the current through a component equals the voltage across the component divided by the resistance of the component. So what we'll ask now is which one of these has the greater resistance, a 75 watt light bulb or a 100 watt light bulb? You might not know how to begin answering this question, so I'll give you a little hint. 75 watt light bulbs or 100 watt light bulbs, all these light bulbs are designed to work off of the house current, which is 120 volts thereabouts. If they both have 120 volts, one of them is drawing 75 watts, one of them is drawing 100 watts. So see if you can answer this question, and if you can't, I'll give you another hint. So the first hint is to remember the formula for power. The power equals voltage times current. Both these have the same voltage, so which must have the greater current? And the answer must be, well, the one with the most power has to have the most current going through it. Well, once you've got current information, what does that tell you about resistance? Next hint is from Ohm's law, I equals V over R, that says that with the same voltage, the one with the greater current has to be the one with the least resistance. The one with the greater current is the 100 watt bulb, because it's got the greater power. The 100 watt bulb has to have the least resistance. We'd like to look at DC circuits in a little more detail. This can be extremely um, complex. We can go into all sorts of detail with this. We're just going to touch the surface. So what I'd like you to be able to do is to analyze the flow of current in simple series and parallel circuits. And we'll talk about what happens when you have a series parallel combination. So first of all, this is what a series circuit is. We have three light bulbs in the same circuit. So basically, we have the voltage source, current has to go through one light bulb, through the next light bulb, and through the next light bulb. There are no branches. To draw the circuit diagram is something like this. We have resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3 in series, or tandem, with the voltage source. By Kirchhoff's junction rule, there are no junctions, there are no branches here, every point on the circuit has to have the same current going through it. The total voltage from the voltage source has to add up to the voltage drops across the three resistors. By Ohm's law, we know that the voltage drops are I times R. We have the same current I in all of these, but different resistances, R1, R2, and R3. So I times R1 plus I times R2 plus I times R3 has to equal the total source voltage. Since the current is the same, we can factor it out of each of these terms. Current times the resistance of resistor 1 plus the resistance of resistor 2 plus the resistance of resistor 3. If you look at it, this is telling you that V, the circuit voltage, is I times this factor. That looks just like Ohm's law. V equals IR. It's just that in this case, R is the sum of three resistances, not just one. So what this is saying is the three resistors in series act like a single resistor whose resistance is the sum of the three series resistor resistances. And that turns out to be a general result for any resistors wired in series. The total equivalent resistance is their sum. The same current flows through all the resistors in the series. The series resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. The voltage drops across each resistor, or the voltage drops of each resistor, add up to the total voltage drop across the series. The voltage across each resistor is proportional to its resistance. We got that from V equals IR. Since they all have the same I, then V is directly proportional to R. So now back to our 100 watt bulb and 75 watt bulb. If they're in series, which is going to dissipate the greater power? Will it be the 100 watt bulb, the 75 watt bulb, the same, or do you not know? Pause, answer this, and then come back as I answer the question. The obvious answer is that the 100 watt bulb is going to dissipate more power than the 75 watt bulb because 100 watts is more than 75 watts. However, these are in series. Light bulbs are not generally designed to go in series with each other unless we're talking about Christmas tree lights. Light bulbs are generally all considered to use the full house voltage of 120 volts. They're going to have the same current through them. The 100 watt bulb, recall, has a lower resistance. 
The 75 watt bulb has the higher resistance. When they're in series, that means that the one with the higher resistance has the higher voltage drop. Since they have the same current, this means that the one with the higher voltage drop has the higher power. What if the resistors are connected in parallel, like this, instead of in series? Everything on this side of the resistors is at one potential, and everything on this side of the resistors is at another potential, because all of these points are connected by a conductor, all of these points are connected by a conductor. And recall that every point on a conductor is at the same potential. So that's what I'm illustrating here with these little nodes, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. From any A to any B is the same potential difference, is the same voltage. So this means that each of these three resistors has the same voltage drop across them. Now, what's not the same is the currents through them. So I1, I2, I3, going through resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, are not necessarily the same. So this is not like the series case where the currents were the same. In the parallel case, the voltages are the same. So the total current coming into and out of the voltage source are going to be the sum of the currents going through resistors 1, 2, and 3. So the total current I is going to be I1 plus I2 plus I3. Well, Ohm's law tells us that I current equals V over R, voltage divided by resistance. We got the same voltage for all three of these. So we have V over resistor 1 plus V over resistance 2 plus V over resistance 3. The total resistance of the circuit is going to be V over I, I being this total current. What we get here if we want to add these up, we're taking V over V over R1, V over R2, plus V over R3. You factor the V out of the numerator and the denominator, and you get this, that the total circuit resistance is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. And I suggest that you verify that for yourself. So when the resistors are wired in parallel, there's the same voltage drop across all of them. The total current is the sum of the individual resistors' currents. The effective resistance of the circuit is less than the resistance for any of the individual resistors. So as you add more resistors in parallel, the total resistance drops. A simpler way to think about this is as you add more resistors in parallel, the total current goes up because there's more pathways for the charges to flow. So the formula for resistance is this, that the reciprocal of the total resistance is equal to the sums of the individual reciprocals of the resistors that are in parallel. So now imagine that the 100 watt bulb and the 75 watt bulb are in parallel, not series now, but in parallel. Which one dissipates the greater power? Answer that question, then I can work through it. Well, when they're in parallel, they have the same voltage. The 100 watt bulb, that's got the lower resistance. The 75 watt bulb has the higher resistance. So in this case, the lower resistance means higher current. For the higher current and the same voltage, that means that it's got to have the higher power. So in this case, it's the 100 watt bulb that has the higher power. That's not too surprising. This is what happens in a house. The different outlets are all wired in parallel with each other, so they have the same voltage. And so obviously the 100 watt bulb is the one that's going to have more power dissipated. What do you do in a situation like this? Because now we've got resistor 1 in series with resistors 2 and 3 in parallel. So 2 and 3 have the same voltage across them. The current through 1 is the same as the current into and out of the voltage source. But the current through 2 and 3 add together to make the current through 1. The voltage through 1 and 2, or the voltage through 1 and 3, 
have to equal the total series voltage. So the simplest way that I know to analyze this situation is to realize that the circuit resistance is the uh, resistance of 1 plus the equivalent resistance of 2 and 3 together and so that we have the reciprocal of the sums of their reciprocals. So if we find this total circuit resistance then we can find the total current going through resistor 1 as I equals V over R. Once you know the current through resistor 1 you can figure out the voltage through resistor 1 because you know its resistance. Once you've got the voltage through resistor 1 then you know what the voltage is through 2 and 3 are. Once you've got those voltages you can figure out their currents. And then you can verify that those currents better add up to the current through resistor 1 or you've done something wrong.